The Crypto Markets Update is brought to you by KuCoin, the best place to find the next crypto gem. Well, joining us now to discuss the crypto markets is Floating Point Group co-founder and CEO, John Purefoy. Good morning, John. Lawrence, good morning. It's great to be here and it's nice to be back. Yeah, glad to have you back. So uh, let's get right to it. We got crypto prices slightly higher today, a 2% rebound or so. But, it, you know, we're, we're facing these kind of big issues with BlockFi filing for bankruptcy. We've got riots of some protests, I should say, in China that are sort of bedazzling the American media uh, at, at the, some of the things that they're calling for. Yeah. Uh, so what exactly is going on here? I, I, is this, I mean, have we, have we bottomed? I, what's going on? You are asking the question every institution I think is asking right now. I think generally speaking, we're kind of at this pause period, right? I kind of analog, I kind of call it the doldrums, right? Which you're kind of stuck in these seas without much wind. It's definitely been choppy past couple of weeks, but when you zoom out a little bit to the past month, three months, it's been a lot choppier over that period. People are nervous right now. A, they're nervous about where the contagion goes. What counterparties are they working with with exchanges, right? Can they put money on different places? Are they going to lose it? So people are very cautious just around that. And secondly, to your question, where is the bottom, right? How many more pieces will fall? How many people will have to sell cryptos to get liquidity? You know, I definitely will say that people are holding back selling if they don't need to at these points. But at the same time, some groups are just having to because of economic situations. So I'd say that people are very cautious right now. And I think that's why we've seen a trend sideways here for a bit. Yeah, I kind of want to call up. We have a chart, this thing, the Coindesk Market Index, which excluding stable coins. This is a Coindesk Market Index. We have a whole bunch of, uh, um, it's a, a different chart than this one here. There it is. Um, it. it it, it shows that you know we had this drop off earlier in the month and then now it's just sideways so this is a bunch this is uh, dozens of of cryptocurrencies in this indexed uh without stable coins in there um yeah. so i mean what so we're so you think this is just going to be flat for a long time i think it's going to so I think it's going to take some time to reestablish that trust right when you think about what's going into this graph there's a couple different components first off Crypto is very much driven and historically has been driven by things like leverage, people doing market making, people doing a lot kind of trading back and forth. You've seen a lot of those firms almost go out of business within the past couple of weeks, right? You've seen large firms, trading firms, kind of say that they're going back or getting less attention and less focus. So I definitely say that we're seeing that in a lot of ways. And then secondly, I would just say that people are nervous, right? They're nervous to either purchase, buy or sell on these exchanges and other places because they don't know what risk those hold. So I think you're going to see it trend sideways until one of two things happen. Either A, trust gets reestablished just over time, or two, people find technological ways to give a little bit more comfort, right? We kind of sit on top of many exchanges. We operate an agency trading business, so we're very transparent with our clients. I think people are asking right now about things like proof of reserves or how can you show me you know, deeper things than just audits to understand, okay, where are you at and what health does your business have? And I think that those are really the key questions. So yes, I think we're going to trend sideways here for a little bit because a lot of these participants have just exited the market for the minute. It's going to take either trust rebuilding or just a general movement to really think about. You know, John, to your point, it, it, we, we did have that, that chart from previous, uh, just right before uh it sounds like a, a horn really doesn't want me speaking here um it's just like going right with with how i'm speaking uh I, I hope that guy moves his car wherever he is so um we we have this chart here this is a this is bitcoin outflows uh and in crypto and that was something that you were just talking about it looks like this is according to coin shares um the total digital asset funds are now at just $22 billion is the lowest it's been in two years. This, this kind of reads that it, not just the retail investors, but also institutions are not looking forward to, or, or just kind of stepping away from this market. I, do you think that th this whole FTX and BlockFi and all the headline risks that they're seeing here uh, has finally just done its number and that people are just giving up and there, that it might be a lot longer than would have been otherwise. 
Yeah, I think a lot of people have said that crypto, that the FTX collapse has really set the industry back two, three years or so. I think it's definitely true. I think people are taking, I don't think people are exiting from the market. I think the better way to think about it is people are pausing, right? They're seeing some mayhem go on and they're seeing every week another bankruptcy come out and they're concerned about that and rightfully so, right? When you're working in these markets, operational security and where your assets are incredibly important. I think Sasha had a really good point, right? You don't have things like government backing and government making sure that all your assets are safe no matter what. So I think people are pausing right, right now as they kind of reevaluate how do we think about risk and where do we go from that? We're seeing that a lot right. from clients. Yeah, go for it, sorry. Yeah, no, I was just gonna say, and, and, and this particularly, as we were discussing in, in the previous segment, is that it almost makes sense for, for regulators to, to make sure that this uh, has a severe reaction just to set the, the, the point that, you know, since crypto's ethos is that we don't need government, we don't need regulation, that in fact, by letting it suffer and die on the vine, uh, it, it kind of drives home the point so that institutions will be spooked for a long time uh, before going back because the risks are much higher than playing in a regulated or semi-regulated market. Yes, I think it's definitely true that when you think about crypto, crypto is more bundled, right? In traditional banking, you've had these series of laws and series of regulations going back to the early 1900s that kind of de-risk the activities that banks can do, right? How much risk they can take on, what capital requirements they have to do, where they can actually put money and what audits they have to do to those extents. When you look at crypto, you don't have those things, right? BlockFi as a firm did many things. They offered banking accounts to people, interest accounts. They traded. They traded with their own money. They kind of ran lending, right? So you kind of have this bundling of many services. And I think that's concerning, right? If you're an institution looking at the space, if you're giving your money to a place that's also trading on their own books, that is a very concerning idea, right? Because yeah. you can be exposed to that and seriously lose money. And I think those are conversations that we're seeing really come up. I think on the regulation side, one, I think we're kind of an interesting spot and I definitely have no regulation expert, but I think it's gonna take some time for any type of serious regulation to come into the space, particularly with say, you know, possibly having split different bodies and things like that. I think it'll take time for regulation to fix it. I think the more like likely outcome is the alpha people will see, right? Right now, spreads on exchanges are very large. And so if you're willing to take those risks, you can make a lot of money in this space right now. But I think that will slowly draw people back. And those are conversations we're having, right? People are, how do I continue trading these markets, but how do I do it safely? And how do I do it intentionally with the right risk parameters to make sure that I'm not too exposed as an institution? So I'd say that people are pausing and being more cautious. They're still excited about it. It's just taking a little bit more intentionality, building those setups up.